You hopefully already know what Keybridge is, but if you don't, this is Skyhoy's new macro application. It will integrate your Skyhoy controller with Mac, PC and Linux, letting you execute shortcuts and move the mouse around in, uh, and, and, and work with applications on your computer systems. So it's really an exciting application that will greatly expand the Skyhoy controllers integration of computer systems along with all the hardware you already have like cameras and and video switches and video hops and so on now that's actually the starting point for today the live fly right here is connected to an atom switcher a black magic design atom switcher that is a piece of hardware that will mix between video sources you probably know that already and um, it is uh, currently the only thing the LiveFly is doing. But what I want to do today is to show you how with Keybridge you can integrate the LiveFly with applications on your PC alongside working with the Atom Switcher. I'm sure you can find some useful cases for that. Could be graphics management for, for Atom switching and, and so on. So it's, it's really exciting and important we can do this. First thing we want to do is to make the panel connect to Keybridge. Keybridge is an application that runs on the PC right here. So I need the panel to now talk to two devices. If we look at the configuration, we'll see that it's currently set up to work with an ATEM switcher. And it's also, if we look at the IP down here, set up with the static uh, IP address. I want to change that over to DHCP. I have uh, the ATEM switcher default configuration here. So I could set all that stuff up. I'll just save this configuration. And then I want to go to the advanced tab of configuration to add the support for Keybridge. That support comes through a device core called raw panel. Raw panel essentially is, and I will explain that in a moment. Let's, let's just add this. Okay, so we have raw panel right here. I'll just select it. So what I'm doing now is actually installing additional support on the Skyhoy device. And after adding it, we can now see we have both the Atom switch and raw panel. Go back to controller configuration. And here we want to enable Unisketch raw panel for the IP address of my computer. I happen to know that already. So I'll just type it in, but I'll show you how you can figure that out in a moment. So I go in here and enter the IP address of my computer where Keybridge is running. I also want to enable DHCP again. That was clearly removed when I went to the advanced configuration. So now all this is good, okay, except that I need to find out which parts of my panel I want to work with Keybridge. So today I want to just pick two or three buttons on the panel that can work with Key, uh, Keybridge. But you will know uh, probably since you already know how Skyhoy controllers work, you'll know that configuration is a matter of assigning actions to buttons and knobs and faders and so on. So um, it's, it's really the same thing going on here. So I'll just uh, pick uh, key number seven. I'll just hold down shift key and select number eight and uh, nine here. Uh, like that and we see these three keys are now shown in the display here okay and on the home screen the, the default configuration I'm just going to remove the actions that currently work with the ATEM switcher to set sources on the program preview bus and now I want to assign those three keys over to Keybridge okay it's really simple I just place my 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 mouse right here and then I can scroll down to Unisketch TCP line you'll see it uh, right here, Unisketch raw panel, that's what it's called, yes. Okay, so I add that action, and then I can just copy this action over to the next key, insert, copy, and then insert. Actually, that's all you need to do. You are, are used to having to change some parameters, but in case of raw panel, all you need to do is to insert that action with the first parameter being just a zero, because then it will pick up the ID of your key. So let's save this. Let's load it onto the controller. So it's saved. Okay. I also want to give it a name, but that's for another day. But you can go to manage configurations, give it a name and so on. Let's move over to the Skyhoy firmware application here. Let's also shut down the web browser in the back. And then I'll press the firmware update button. So what happens right now is that the configuration I just made on the Skyhoy servers is now being transferred into the firmware of the LiveFly. And whenever I press these three keys on the LiveFly, instead of sending routing commands to the ATEM switcher for sources on program and preview, it will instead send keystrokes over to Keybridge over here. And we can let Keybridge act on those triggers, okay? So that's what we're gonna see in a moment. 
when I just added those three actions, the ID of each action, I think it was like uh, seven, eight and nine, they will automatically be picked up and passed over. We'll also see that in a moment because uh, all components on a Skyhawk controller has an ID number. And that ID number is, is the identification we use in Keybridge to associate actions with the keys on the panel. The same is true for faders and for uh, knobs. If we had a controller with a joystick, same thing. Every component on a Skyhawk controller will have an ID number we can use for this matching. So we're waiting for the firmware to be compiled and loaded onto the panel. And as soon as that's done, we'll see that it's showing up in the interface. So while we're seeing that it is writing, let me just quickly show you how we can detect the IP of Keybridge. That's really easy. You just go to settings here and then you see, by the way, the port number and that the server is started, but you also see the IP address right here. So this is the IP address I knew already when I set up my configuration. But it's a great thing to know that, let me just exit this, that if you go to the IP configuration in the firmware updater, you can change the IP address after the fact. What we did right now when we used the online setting of IP address is really that the IP address got baked into the firmware. Okay, so it is there even if I clear the presets, it's it's there inside the live fly, but I can always change it up here. So uh, we just saw a little pop up here that, that there was a new panel connected. So we go to the devices tab of Keybridge and there we go. We see live flies showing up on the screen. And now we can choose two things, either approve or block. Makes sense, right? Security, you want to make sure that you allow certain panels to connect to you. By the way, if you want to automatically approve certain serial numbers, you can just add them down here and then you don't have to approve that every time. Otherwise, we will have this approval process going on so that only authorized devices will connect. So what we can do now, and by the way, look at the panel. On the panel, you can see that the three buttons that I assigned to actions from Keybridge will now show no colors on the buttons. And also in the display, they say empty. Empty is Keybridge telling the, the displays to show this text because we have nothing assigned to the keys just yet. But we will do that right now. So we go to macros and uh, I'll just um, enlarge the application so you can have a really good overview here. And in the macro overview, I'll now add a new macro like that. And now I can do a number of things. Let's start out with the really simple ones. I can move mouse around. I can also do keystrokes. Those are the main things that we want to do in Keybridge. And before we get anywhere close to doing that, we want to train Keybridge on which trigger that we will act on. So I press train and then I press the first key that I assign. Notice what happens on the screen. The hardware component index, the, the identification of that key is shown to be seven. And all I, it, it took really to announce that now I'm going to work with that key is pressing it. So what I can do now is to take this action, mouse move absolute, and then move it in here. So what will happen now if I save is that the mouse will move to this location. Let's try. Okay, so I'm just going to save like that. I press this one. It says new macro, by the way, uh, and, and we'll change that in a moment. Notice what happens to my mouse cursor. It is right here on the screen. I press this one. It is moving up into the upper left corner, point, uh, 0, 0 location. So I want to change that to something else. Let's say that I want to move it to that location. I, After clicking in the field of the coordinates, I now move the location of the mouse where I want it and press shift space and it detects that coordinate. I can now save that and let's do that. I save. Notice what happens to the mouse cursor. I press the button. It moves into that location. So I promise you I want to have a different title in this, um, in this field. So I'll just move mouse. Okay. And this is, whoops, move mouse. Uh, important stuff because in a moment you'll see you have a lot of macros. I need to save changes. Okay. Save. If we go to the macro overview, after having a few hundred macros, you're going to want to have a description and a title of each one of them. So that's what you get in this overview. Move mouse is going to be really helpful. Otherwise, you'll just have a lot of new macro, new macro, new macro. So going back to macros here, we can now extend what we're doing. Or basically, if I go back and edit this guy, we can extend what we're doing. We can also click. And now I want to do something more useful. I want to do something in an application that really needs a mouse click. Okay. So I will just turn my focus over to live. Livestream Studio and Livestream Studio has 
many features that we already support, just like we have integration with Atem, we have it with vMix, we have it with OBS and with Livestream Studio. There is also a number of things that you cannot control in the, those software packages. And when that is the case, we can manipulate our way through using KeyBridge, okay? One of the things is that on the auxiliary tab, we can't select sources and make a cut on those sources with the API of Livestream Studio. It's not supported, so we need KeyBridge to do this. Let's see how that could go. So basically, what I want to do is to modify my macro a little bit here. So let, let's just say that I, I place the cursor here, I change over to Livestream Studio, I move my, my cursor into location. Let's say this one for source number one. That's the location. I press uh, shift space and over back in KeyBridge, I now detected that coordinate. So when I press save, I will, and I press the button down here, it is going to move to that location. Unfortunately, you see that KeyBridge is not in focus right now. Oh, sorry, live, uh, live, no, live stream studio is not in focus. So we need to change that. But we also need to create a click action. And um, let's just try those two things out. We have something called application focus that will help us to move into uh, the application. And uh, let me just see, Livestream Studio is right here. So we will, um, in addition to, to doing this, we will now bring in the action application focus before we move the mouse. Ah, well, it could be either way. But we first want to focus the application, then we want to move the mouse to this location, then we want to, to create a click like this, okay? And then let's say this is, this is all we want to do for now. The click is a left click, one click, okay? The mouse location is already set, that's fine. What we need to do now is train the application focus. So I just switch over to Livestream Studio, and then like with recording the position, I'm now recording which application is in focus. So I press Shift Space, and back here in KeyBridge, we detected that Livestream Studio is the application we want to put in focus. To test this, I can press the test button, okay? Oh, it works. That's awesome. So that's all I need to do. Let's see if this works. Um, to prove it, let's go to Livestream Studio and make sure we are somewhere else, like on source number two, okay? So let's see if this actually happens. Are you ready? Press the button on the live fly and it moves over to the application, hits source number one. Number of problems already. What if Livestream Studio was located like over here? What would happen then? Okay, let's see. We go back here. Press this one. Ah, cool thing. Actually, the application focus will move the window back in the place where it belongs. But it turns out that maybe, maybe not, it needed a little time to move the window before we actually execute the press of the button. So in case that you see that there's a number of sequences that require a little delay, we can also add a delay. At least we should add the delay here to see things happening in the pace that we like. So let's just put in a uh, half a second delay here. Okay, like that. And we can also, before we move the mouse and we can do the click, we can also put in a delay. So let's just see how delays work. These are very nice elements to help us uh, confirm the flow of actions here. So let's save this. Let's just, for the sake of proving it, move this out of focus, okay, uh, just to the side. And then we go over here. So now we're ready. One, two, three, mm, do this, okay. We see there was a little bit of delay moving this application in, moving the mouse cursor to the place and pressing the button. Now, um, so all those things um, now in place for the application focus of live stream studio right here. And we have seen how we can make um, absolute mouse moves, we can click, we can uh, use the sleep time, we can also have application focused on. In fact, we need to work a little bit more to make this really uh, good with Livestream Studio. What we need to do is to also consider if the auxiliary tab is even um, is, is even, e even in focus. And another thing is that many people, I think, like to run Livestream Studio in a maximized version. So maybe we also want to uh, consider the, the new coordinates of uh, clicking these things. So let's, let's take a look at that. And we go back to KeyBridge now, and then uh, we like to having this application focus, and maybe we want to maximize it. So we can actually have it done automatically for us. So in that case, we should probably see if we can demaximize. Uh, just uh, for a minute. Okay, let's, let's just test this one out. 
I have this uh, maximize thing test. Okay, that's great, works. Okay, back here, we sleep a little bit, that's nice. This coordinate is probably not accurate anymore, but before that, I want to actually first click the tab. So I will throw in this one, I will throw in a click, and then I want to, again, see a little bit of sleep. We can always remove the sleeps if they are not necessary, but for the sake of building this up, we'll just do it and type in 500 here. So this coordinate we have right here, let's train that one. We move over to Livestream Studio and then I, I move my, my cursor in position for this one, press shift space to record this one. We are back here, we have the coordinates. We click one time, then we move the cursor to this location, which is probably wrong by now. So I move back here and then I set it right here, okay? So I recorded this new location right here. I uh, I sleep, I click, and so forth. Okay, save. Let's see if this works. Now, um, again, to, to prove the concept, let's just um, um, make this a not maximized window. Let's select something else here. Let's make sure that the inputs uh, tab is selected and see what happens, okay? So, uh, first thing that, uh, let, let's click it. Okay, move mouse. There you go. You saw all these actions playing back with a little bit of delay in between so we could follow along and see this is actually happening. You know what? You can replicate this action for source number two and source number three. And by the way, in order to actually use this, you also need to press the cut button. But guess what? You can just add that. But before, uh, or instead of going through all those repetitions, uh, huh, repeat those things, I'm sorry, then let's see how we can categorize a little bit these actions. So to organize your list of events that happens from pressing a button, you can add a section start. And I think um, maybe a, a section I would like to see is one that um, encapsulates um, selecting the tab and I could name it then select, select tab, uh, the uh, auxiliary tab, okay? So that's what's happening here. And I need to add a section end. So after moving and clicking and sleeping, we are good. So that's the end of that. I could now also add a section in the same way for actually clicking the first source and give that a name and so on. See, the, the beauty of sections is that I can collapse them like this. Let's just try and, and do that too. Um, so we have a new section here. Click source one, okay. And then we add a section end to this guy as well. So now you see very tidy, we have grouped these events into uh, logical blocks that will um, help us to have a better overview of our actions. And by time this application will have a little library of such things that you can reuse and so on. So there's going to be more development coming that will organize this really neatly. But you get the point. Let's see how this can work with a few other software packages. So I think um, vMix has a lot of things that you can do with it. But there is one thing that we have not discovered in the API and that is the ability to turn on and off overlays for the last selected overlay source by using these keys. We can do that with KeyBridge. Once again, all we need to do is basically create a new macro and therefore we go out here and uh, create a new macro. This time I want to do it for vmix, I'll just give it a name, um, OL overlay one uh, and then I train this button and I press the second one here. Okay, so it's picked up hardware component number eight. We move the, uh, first we do application focus, yes. And then we do uh, a mouse move and then we do a mouse click, all right? And in this case, I, I don't put any sleep in between. Uh, first, let's train the application focus. We move over to vMix and then I capture the application focus. It's done, let's test it. Yes, it works. Okay, I'm, I wanna record the mouse position. It's gonna be right here. And uh, shift space, record, and we are back here. Coordinates are picked up, that's great. Okay, save this and let's move over to vMix and then see, okay, the overlay is not enabled. So what happens when I press the second key now? You see the mouse is moving there, it is enabling the overlay. I press it once again and I'm toggling this on and off because each time I do a click on this button, it's gonna toggle on and off the overlay. And you even see there's a little um, uh, label in the display coming from KeyBridge that tells you what this button is now doing. So that's also great. 
Guess what? We can do the same thing with uh, OBS as well. If we want uh, to work with OBS, it's uh, very easy to do the same. We have it right here. If we did this, we would essentially have integrated four different switching systems in the same control panel, right? We can do stuff in vMix, in Livestream Studio, in ATEM, and even things that are not supported in the APIs. So I don't know, it probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense to, to actually show you the exact same thing for OBS. But then let's go back and think about what could the last key be doing. And I want to focus on how we can do something with text and keyboard shortcuts. So to, to round that off and let you know what that's about, let's look at these two. First, we are now training the, fi um, the, the third key here. So I'm pressing this guy. Okay, it picks up and, oh, by the way, if I move over from simple to advanced, I can do more advanced uh, work with my keys. Now, these are four-way buttons, and uh, it means that, you see, as I'm now training the key, you see the modifiers actually coming uh, here. If I want to detect a, an, an up edge, what means I, I want to do something when I release the button, I can make a macro reflecting or acting upon the release of a button, which is what would happen if I go ahead right now. Otherwise, I could just hold it down and it would use the, the down edge. In the simple mode, we do what you most possibly want, which is to activate something when you press the button on the down edge. But we also have different edges of the key because it is a four-way button. And notice this one, edge down. So when I press the upper side of the button, you get the upper edges detected. On the right side of the button, you have the right side. And on the left edge of the button, you have the left edge. Hey. That really illustrates really clearly that four-way buttons are small binary joysticks and you can assign actions to any of these edges if you want. That's in the advanced mode, so you see what is hidden in there, really cool stuff. So let's do it on the top edge, on the down press, so I'll just do this, and then I'm storing this value. Okay, good. So we are good to go with a key press, for instance, and uh, let's just make a text input here. So I'll just drag this over, and then let's say the text input is, hello world, and uh, the, the key press that I'm going to do is the, um, I'll just uh, hold down uh, control A for select all. So I press um, plus here, I press control, okay, and then I press plus, and then I put in an A. So now I've made a keyboard shortcut, control A, and I can now save this, okay? So <clears throat> to see if this is working, let's just use the search field here. So I, I put my cursor right here, and I press the button, and you see that, it is going to actually do things in the... Um, ah, you know what? I'm confused. Okay. So I press here and then I press the button. But remember that I need to press the right edge. Now, I, I decided to record... What was it, by the way? Let me just check. The upper edge on the down press, okay? So I need to be here, press the upper edge on the key, and you see it's now typing in hello world and selecting everything. So those two things are executed right after each other. So the question is, how will you want to use that? Well, it could be small standardized chat messages that you want to execute like that and combine that with application focus and also moving the mouse, clicking into the field, putting in text, executing a shortcut to, to send the message or whatever. Before we leave this presentation, I would like to share with you how we can put feedback on the buttons and the displays as well, as a part of the actions that gets executed when we press a button. So uh, the first thing I want to do on the third button here is to create a new name. I want to put in um, hello message, like that, okay? And as I save, we now see this in the display. So it picks up the message, uh, the, the, the label or the name of the macro is put in the displays by default. But I can change some of that so I can add text and color. And what I want to do is to add a different text when the button is executing. So I'll just type in here, running, like that. Just correct this little mistake. And then I'll select a red color, like that, okay? So that's going to happen when we are running this. And then at the end, I want to return to a different color of the button. So I'll just uh, select these two, like here, okay? And then I'll type in normal. And then the color of the button will be some bluish color that I choose here. Okay, I'm saving. So now let's just move the, the cursor down here in the field and be ready to execute this. I press the upper edge of the button and it says running. It types in and it's going to return to the blue color and say normal operation. So that is feedback. 
So only your imagination is really the limit here. There's a lot more that Keybridge can do and will be able to do in the future, but this is all I want to share with you right now to get you started on how you can integrate Keybridge with an ATEM switcher, working with software packages that is basically your choice. It's, it's an amazing new tool that will create so much more value with your Skahoy controller.